Okay, so let's start. Okay, so I, I, I did that. Okay, for optics, just uh, if you're going to study, you know, if you go to the health, pre-health uh, jobs, if you, the, the, the way you, you do the, how you're going to trace ray diagram, like, for example, if you have a lens, yeah, the way we do that, like, you have a lens and it's a converging lens. So co converging lens are the lenses that you use for projector here, for your eyes. Your eye here has a converging lens. Converging lens is the pupil plus the liquid. They are both part of the converging lens. And mag magnifying glasses are also converging lens. So each converging lens, so that will be the symbol for it, right? So that means converging. And it has a focal length. Okay, so to find the focal length, you will take your converging lens. You have a piece of paper, and when you have a clear image, the focal length will be the distance between your paper and the lens. And, and then you have a picture of the lightning, for example, upside down. So smaller the focal length, that means that thicker is your lens and it can focus more. Right? So when you are young and you are reading a text, for example, your lens here will become thicker. It will adapt, so it will focus on your paper you are reading. And when you are getting older, you will see you have things called arthritis and arthritis and all those nasty stuff. Everything gets stiffer, including the muscle in your eye. So it's harder to focus, right? So anyway, let's say you have a tree here. Yeah. Let's make a tree. So you see that you see that a tree will have Let's say from the top of the tree, you're going to have a lot of ray, right? Coming in all direction, of course. From a point, let's say from that point, you're going to have rays coming in all direction. But only a few of them will go through that lens. Okay, so that's why the image will be dimmer. Now, we use only two rays to have the image, but you have multiple rays. We know that the rays that is parallel will go through the focal point on the other side. Okay, it's called a ray diagram. And you know that the ray coming from that single point going through the center of the lens will not be refracted, so it goes straight line. So then you can, you can uh, draw the image of your tree here. And I think it's a question on the pop quiz when you have a converging lens. The image, the image, if it's not virtual, is always upside down. So if you have a, a screen here, if you put a screen, you will be able to see the image of your tree. And that's what they are using here on the projector. This is the image. And that's a real image because you see you can, uh, you can see it on a screen. Now, of course, you have more than one ray, right? So you have this ray, but this ray will also go to the same point, okay, that, that ray here will go to the same point, and that ray here will go to the same point, okay, but those two rays here are very special because you can draw it, and of course, you have ray coming from here, for each point you're going to have ray, right, so you're going to have ray, it will go to here, and this ray, we go to here, and then it gets messy. So usually we only draw some rays. And that's how we do a, that's called a ray diagram. So that's if you are doing optics. Is that clear? So likewise, if you have a diverging lens, so it's concave, concave, so we that's the symbol for a concave lens. And uh, if, you, if you have a tree here, let's see what's going to happen to it. So let's say you have a ray coming and it's parallel. 
instead of converging, it's going to diverge. It's going to diverge like it's coming from here. So it's going to do this. And then this here going through there, it's not going to be deflected. So you see those rays are diverging, but they seems to come from there. So you do have an image, but the image is ghost, like it's a virtual image. But you will be able to see it because your eyes has a, diverge, a converging lens and you can have the image again upside down in your brain. That's your brain. But the image is virtual. Okay. That's your eye. Remember, that's how I make eye. So it has a converging lens. Okay, it's just a parenthesis. You don't need to know that for the final. It's just that if you want to study more, maybe you're going to take the GRE or whatever, you know, so you have a better understanding. But that you see that the image is smaller, but it's erect. So the image from a diverging lens or concave lens are always virtual and erect. So I show you that if I take my glasses and look for my glasses, you should see something smaller, but not upside down, right? If I take a, I don't know if I have a converging lens here. You take a converging lens and you can go from where you are. Oh, by the way, oh, look at that. Do you see that luminous point here? You see that point here? Oh, yeah. Okay, you know what is it? It's the image of the light from the projector. The, the light comes parallel because it's really far compared to the stars. Okay, and the converging here, so this is the image of my projector, and that distance here is the focal lens. But if you look for it, I don't know if you can look for it, but if you look for it, you should see something upside down. So you can see it. So I'm going to do the same thing over there. You see that point here? That's the image of that light. So light comes parallel, and then you focus here at the focal point. That distance here is the focal distance. And if you were outside, you would get the image of the sun, and you can burn that. <laughs> now, if you look uh, very close here, what you see here is a virtual image. Okay, so you are using as a magnifying glass. Okay, so it's really in a nutshell. Optics is a very, very cool topic. So if I use a converging lens as a magnifying glass, so you are looking at a small animal, for example, those horrible beetles. Uh, they, they have a lot of fun, I can, I can tell you, in the aquarium. But you have to look at it really close, so inside the focal lens, and a ray parallel will always go through the focal point on the other side, and here it will go. Um, so they are not supposed to meet here, it's because I'm not doing it right. Okay, let's try again, otherwise I will look online. So let's say I look at those bugs here. Ray going parallel. It's because I'm supposed to take a. Here it's better. I'm supposed to take a ruler, right? A ray going through here. And you see that now they don't meet on that side. Okay? But they meet on this side. So that means if you bring a magnifying glass very close to a bug, what you are seeing is the image 
of the bug, but behind, like if you are looking at my pattern here, you see the image of the flower behind here. So that's a, that's a virtual image. And you see that now it's, a, it's bigger, but it's virtual. If you put a screen here, you won't be able to see it. But again, because your eye, your eye, and that's an eye, okay? <laughs> right? It's an eye. Your eye will be able to get those and, and converge again, and you, you're going to see the bug here upside down. Okay, that's how it works. So this, this is called virtual image. So then we can have more than one lens, and, and that's how we make... That's how we make uh, microscopes or telescope. So, for example, what do we have here? So, coming from very, very, very far away. So, very far away. So, what do you think is it? Is it a telescope or a microscope? Very good, telescope, very, very far away, all the light here, all the rays are parallel, they're going to focus at the focal point of this one, this one is very thin, so this is called the objective, yeah. this, this is the objective when you have a telescope, and the job of the objective is to bring the light from something really, really, really far, to bring it close to you at the focal point point of this lens and then you see here this one is thicker so you are using it as a magnifying glass because now this is inside the focal length so this is the focal length for this one that's going to be a big focal length and this one is small so now you're going to see whatever you are look looking at but bigger and virtual okay conclusion Pop quiz next week. I think it's a good question. In a telescope, um, uh, not next week, Thursday. So a telescope, you have two lenses, right? Both of them are converging. The thin one, its job is to bring the light from a star or something really, really, really far away close. So this, this lens is very thin. So it's going to bring the light the image very close to you, but it's going to be very small. So then you need an eyepiece that will be used as a magnifying glass to make it bigger. Okay, so if I look at um, wisdom, I see a very small wisdom here, very small. And then I will use a magnifying glass so, to, make, to make her bigger. Okay, so the objective is always thin. And the eyepiece is always thick. From here, I get a real image. From there, I get a virtual image. But that's how it works. That's how telescope works. You always have two lenses. One to bring the thing really far close to you. So you have an image, but upside down. And then you need a lens to make it bigger. And by the way, you, you see that I'm not wrong. This, this is how we make eye. I don't know why there was a discussion about it. This is an eye, okay? <laughs> no, no, my, I'm very happy with my eye. Yeah. Yes, very good. Actually, that's a very good question. You should take definitively my class. You should get an easy A with my class astronomy. Yeah, very good question. A pair of binoculars is like two telescopes. You have two telescopes. But your brain is smart enough that you should get two images, right? Because you have two telescopes. One image for your right eye and one image for your left eye. But your brain is so smart that, that it's merging the both images in one. Isn't that smart? So you don't see two images, you see one. It's merged in one. No, microscope, you, you only use one eye. 
Did you see a microscope with two objects, with two things? Maybe? Okay, so if in that case, yes, you merge together. Is it because our brains are smart enough or because... It's, it's done by the brain. I, I've, I've no idea how it's done, but I know that you don't see two images, you see only one. It's, it has to do with the brain, okay? You, you have to check it out. So by, by the way, a, a pair of binocular, big one from the army surplus is always better than the cheap telescope from Walmart. Because a pair of binocular is just two telescopes. Yeah. So uh, a concave is always virtual. That's what I have. So convex, it depends. If a convex has a, I don't know if you see on my hand, it must be like a picture, right? So there's a focal length. If, if the, the object is beyond the focal length, it's going to be real and upside down. But if the object is close to it, like you're looking at a bird, then you get virtual bigger and erect. So what do we have here? We have a bird and you have two converging lines. What do you think it's, this is? Microscope, very good. So you have the object beyond the focal length. So you're going to get an image here. But that image will get very close to this one, which is acting like a magnifying glass. And now you have a virtual image, which is not upside down compared to the object, but which is bigger. So that's your bug, and that's what you see. Okay, at the end, you see upside down bug, but if a bug doesn't have a top and a bottom, it's fine, right? Okay, so that will be a microscope. So you can use two converging lenses. Yeah. So a converging lens has a focal lens. Whatever you are looking at at a distance away from the focal lens, can you see what you see? You're going to see something real and upside down. So you see that? You see the, the arrow here? You, you're going to see the image but upside down. But if you are very, very close, then you are using as a magnifying glass. Right? So if you are very, very close, that's a magnifying glass. But if you are farther away, you're going to see the image upside down, not virtual. You, you, you can experiment. Very close inside the focal length. Like, like you were when you were a kid, like looking at little stuff. Inside. So here you see I have a lens. That distance here will be the focal length. If I put an object inside, it's going to be virtual, bigger, and not upside down. So if it's upside down, it's real. And if it's erect, that's virtual. Okay, so you can always, you know, I invite you to take your book, and, and, but I give you enough, enough so you can understand. So here I have a picture of a diverging lens. So diverging is concave. You know it makes a cave. You have the object here. That image here will be smaller, erect, and virtual. Okay, so you can you can Google and find so that will be my glasses. Okay, if you look at something from my glasses, it's going to be smaller. Okay, what else I wanted to tell you? I talked about diffraction. Uh, no, no, no. 
No. Uh. Oh, uh, here, the other things I wanted to show you is the plain mirror. You see, if you want to see the, your whole body, you don't need the whole size mirror. You can, you can have just one half of your body height. Okay, so you can save on mirror space, I guess. <laughs> so you have the light coming from your feet, for example, it's going to bounce off here, and your feet will be here. So that will be a virtual image. And the light from your head will bouncing off to your eye, so you can see your head. So half a mirror is enough if you want to see your full body. So a mirror, a flat mirror, always gives you a virtual image of yourself. Because light, you see light, it's going to bounce off to your eyes. And your eyes didn't take physics 2054. So it seems to come from there. So you think your feet is here. Light from your top of your head is going to be bouncing off, seems to come from here. So that will be the image that you see beyond the mirror. So that distance here will be equal to this distance there. It's a virtual image at the same distance, you know, be behind the mirror. That was a very good show, very scary, especially today. It's called Black Mirror. Have you seen that movie? Oh, that's such a good show. It's very scary. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Uh, and then I, I just want to. Um, I have found something called um, a, a way to make you understand interference, right? We we talked about interference a lot, and and sometimes it's uh, no spoiler. Oh my God, Miss Not you. Uh, let's say I, I had great pictures. Okay, so interference only when you have waves, right? So interference is a property of waves. That's how they were able to show that light can behave like waves. So you have one source with the same frequency and the same wavelength. You have the light going through two openings. And remember, when light goes through opening, and the, if the opening is smaller than the wavelength of the light, light will spread out, right? So it's called diffraction. And all the waves coming from these two sources will interact with each other. And here, if we have a screen, you're going to see bright, dark, bright, dark. And in my slides, I, sh I have the math to find where is the position, what, what's the y, I mean, what, what's the height here, to find wh wh the position of the first bright. And in my slide here, we, we talk about the math. Okay, so you see fringes. So we talked about that already. That's, that will be the math. And the best way to understand it is that if you have sound waves, right? So you have two speakers. If they are located at the same distance from you, so you're going to have crest to crest, you have what is called constructive interference. That only works if they have the same frequency and the same wavelength. So, of course, if you have speakers, they come from the same audio system, it's going to be the same sound. So that's going to be very loud. If the distance is half a wavelength away, so then you're going to have destructive interference. 
because you have a crest and the throat healing each other out. And the relationship is if the distance, the difference of distance between them is one wavelength, one wavelength, two wavelength, three wavelength, it's going to be constructive interference. If the distance between the source and the sensor here, so the, the difference between the distance between here and there and there and here is half of a wavelength, 1.5 wavelength, um, 2.5 wavelength, 3.5 wavelength, and so forth and so on, you're going to have destructive interference. Okay, so that, that will explain the math here. So I just want to show you very quickly uh, why. If I remember how to do it. Uh, okay, let's do it. Let's say you have a sound wave. Okay, I make it square, but of course it's not supposed to be square. And let's say you have a speaker here. That's a speaker. That's not an eye now. I don't know how to make speaker. It's a speaker. It's a source, A. Okay. So that will be a sound wave. So sound wave are compression wave. Okay. So it means the air molecules are pushed and pull, pushed and pull, pushed and pull, pushed and pull. So now what's going to happen if you have another source with the same wavelength and the same frequency, okay? So what do I do? Copy and paste. Okay, so now I have another speaker here, another speaker here, uh, B. Is there a difference in, in the distance? Let's say I'm listening to, I'm located here. No, right? So it will be constructive. Now, the difference between the distance, between the source and whoever is listening here is half a wavelength. Look what's going to happen. So you see it's one half a wavelength away the difference so what's going to happen is it constructive or destructive destructive okay so here there is no difference in the path now it's destructive what about now constructive it's one wavelength away okay so the, i have two speakers i'm located here i move away one of the speaker by a distance of one wavelength. It's okay, it's still going to be constructive. But now I move it again. How many wavelengths? One, two, three, uh, 1.5, okay? One, 1.5 wavelength. Is it constructive or destructive? What do you want me to mark? Okay, destructive or constructive? So this is zero wavelength, this is half, this is one, and this is 1.5. Constructive or destructive? Destructive or constructive? Destructive, okay? Now I am two wavelength, constructive and destructive, and so forth and so on, right? So that will explain, if you want to understand the math, that will explain the math here. Okay, so the first, uh, when, when you are doing fringes, uh, here or here, So you have two sources, the distance between S2 here and S1 
if 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 it's one wavelength, two wavelength, three wavelength, you're gonna have a bright line. If it's half a wavelength, 1.5 wavelength, 5.5, three uh, um, half of a wavelength or 1.5, then it's gonna be dark. So that's just to explain the ma the math. Okay, let's let's do an example. Okay, so you are standing in front of two speakers and they have the same wavelength, the same frequency. Now you are moving, one person is moving away and doesn't hear any sound. So one person is 7 meter and the other one is 7.2 meter and there is no sound. So if there is no sound, is it destructive or constructive? Destructive. So you can imagine here. So one speaker is at seven, the other sp speaker is at 7.2, and you are not hearing any noise. So it's destructive. So the difference of distance is equals to what? 0.5, right? Half a wavelength, right? So do do the computation. Okay, so you have the sound wave here, and now it's destructive. So that distance here, the smallest one will be half a wavelength. So they tell you this is 7.2 meters, this is 7 meters. So the distance between them has to be half a wavelength, like I just showed you before. So half a wavelength will be equal to what? 0.2. So the wavelength equals 0 0.4 meters, right? And uh, let's say the speed of sound is 343 meters per second. Can you find the frequency? Speed is wavelength times frequency. Can you find the frequency of the sound? It's exactly like I showed you before, right? So you have two waves. If the waves are off by just half of the wavelength, I'm going to get destructive, okay? So if the difference between them, and I'm hearing it here, is half a wavelength, Okay, that will be half a wavelength. So they are shifted by half a wavelength. So then it's going to be destructive. This is exactly what I have here. So I have source A and source B. So if I move that speaker half a wavelength forward, say I'm going to have no sound. Is that clear? And we know that the speed of sound is 343 meters per second. I think it's five miles in one second. So can you find the frequency? What do you get? 877 hertz. No, 57. 0.5 hertz. 858 hertz. Is that clear? So by the way, I'm not going to have question uh, about sound in the final, but I think there is a question with the speed of light. And remember that the speed of light will be the same for any, any radiation, X-ray, gamma rays, infrared, they all have the same speed in the vacuum. And that will be equal to the wavelength times the frequency. So if I ask you, let's say you are given the frequency, you should be able to find the wavelength given that the speed of light is 3 times 8 meter per second in, in vacuum. The speed of light will uh, be smaller in a piece of glass. I think there was a question like that too. So if, for example, it glass uh, has a refraction number of 
then the speed of glass, uh, the speed of light in glass will be c divided by 1.5. It goes smaller. And you do remember that speed, by the way, is distance divided by the time. You, usually this is meter and this is second, so this is meter per second. Is that clear? Now if I move it by 1.5 wavelength, then I'm going to have destructive again. If I move it by twice the wavelength, that will be constructive. Okay, so then you can understand. Okay, let's do this one quickly. Help each other, talk to each other, blah, blah, blah. So let's first let's find so the both speaker are emitting the same sound, right? So you have one wave coming from here and one wave coming from there. And we don't know if it's constructive or destructive. So you, we need to find the distance between D1, so that will be that distance here, and D2. If the difference is one wavelength, two wavelength, three wavelength, four wavelength, it's constructive and it's going to be hurting your ears. If the difference between the paths will be half of a wavelength, 1.5 of a wavelength, uh, 2.5 of a wavelength, 3.5 of a wavelength, then it's going to be destructive. So of course, first let's find the wavelength. Can you do that? Okay, let's find the wavelength. Okay, so you have the frequency, 214 hertz. The speed of light, that will be a typical uh, speed of light. It's about 5 miles. I forgot now. 5 miles in one second. Okay, so anyway, find the wavelength. Uh, we are Tuesday, okay, no meeting. I have a meeting next Thursday, okay, 3.30. Did you do it? Speed is wavelength times frequency because this is meter and frequency is 1 over second. So that's going to be meter per second. So what do you get? 3.43 equals 2.14 times the wavelength. So what is the wavelength? 1.6666 or 1.6? 1.6? Okay, so let's find now D1 minus D2 to see if it's half a wavelength or just one wavelength. Okay, so how can you find D1? Pythagorean theorem, very good. Sir. How much is that? It's four. You sure? Yeah. Okay, four. So let's find D1 minus D2. Ah, it's 1.6, okay. So what is that? One wavelength or half a wavelength? One wavelength. So is it constructive or destructive? Constructive, okay? If it was half a wavelength, destructive. 1.5 wavelength, destructive. 2.5 wavelength, destructive. Okay? Is that clear? Are you with me on that? Okay, cool. So you can do the same thing with that and understand the math, right? Of course, here, if you have two wave, let's take blue, you see that they, they are at the same distance from here, so it's going to be bloom, 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 and then here we have bloom, 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 so you see this distance is the same, it's going to be constructive, that's going to be bright, but here I'm going to be half a wavelength away and it's going to be dark. 
here I have two wavelengths away and it's going to be bright, right? So if, if you do that here, and if you do this here, the difference between this path and that path is going to be three wavelengths. Uh, no, zero wavelength, one wavelength, two wavelengths. So constructive, 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 destructive, 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 destructive. Same thing with light, but sound, of course, is easier to do. Yeah. 1.6, oh, it's gone. Uh, 1.6 is the wavelength. So one wavelength away, it's constructive. Huh? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, 1.5 will be mixed, so it's not su super loud. It's not no sound. It's it's uh, in the middle because it will uh, it will add each other. Yeah. So it, it doesn't, if it's one is louder, so, they, so the, the volume, it's a good question, the volume goes uh, with the intensity square. So you, you, will, you need to add one intensity here square plus the other one to get the both. It's, it's, it will be complicated. So it means like you have to think of sine wave. So you have a small sine wave and you are adding a big sine wave. So they will, will add each other out. So actually it will be linear, right? So if it's five here and this is a, a one, so it will be six. But your ear, not going to hear that because your ear works like a logarithmic scale. So it, it has to do with log, adding log, so it's more complicated. Okay, so that's the idea of cancelling noise. So if you hear noise here, the electronics will be able to produce exactly the opposite wave form. So then it will cancel the sound and it will be better. Now, if you have, because so far, so far everything I've said works if the two sounds have the same frequency and the same wavelength. So what's going to happen if they are a little bit out of frequency, a little bit off? You, you're going to hear something called beats. I don't know if you heard that. It goes, right? So if you have a frequency of 300 and then a frequency of 320, adding together, you get bits. Yeah. That's because the way they, they move their wings, it, they move faster than the speed of sound. So it's like you are beating the sound barrier and, and that's why you hear that annoying sound which is good for us, we can hear them coming, right? Let me get these things so they're a little bit different in frequency <coughs> and strike them both at the same time. So you have two tuning fork. So tuning fork, they have the same frequency. So you can play with them, right? If you are like half a wavelength away from each other, no sound. One wavelength, very loud. In between, it's going to be in between. But now you have one frequency and the other one is a little bit off. Hear what you're going to hear. Can you hear the throbbing? That's a re that is the result of inter 
interference, and the phenomenon is called feet. All right. His name is Paul Hewitt. You know, he has a very interesting story because his high school professor told him, you know, you, you are good to nothing. You, you should go back to uh, doing art. You are good at art. You are not going to be good at science, right? So he, after high school, he didn't go to college. But then he started to ask questions, you know, this is interesting. Why is this happening? And why is this happening? So finally, he came back to a community college in uh, California. And... And then he ended up doing a master and PhD in physics, and he became very famous writing books about conceptual physics, right? So never listen to people who tell you, you know, you cannot do it. Uh, to, to go back to your question, uh, uh, wisdom, like when you're adding waves, when waves, like when you are playing music, when you are playing music, that's that's what you're gonna get, right? So you are adding sine waves all together with different intensities. So you can add them up, and and you have a different uh, a sound, right? Which is not pure sound. That's called a complex wave. What does it sound like? Like like I'm sounding now. No, but I'm not. I, I like it's not like a tuning fork that has a given frequency, right? Exactly. Okay, so standing waves. Standing waves have to do with music and resonance. So remember that. I spoke about resonance, right? So if you excite a system with the right frequency, you're going to get very high amplitude. So for example, if you have a, a swing and you're going to start pushing at the right frequency, the swing will go higher and higher and higher, right? This is called resonance. We talked about a tank circuit in a microwave, right? A microwave, you have like an oscillation between a solenoid or a coil and the capacitors. So you're going to have oscillation, swing back and forth. And if it's at the right frequency, you're going to emit microwave. This is resonance, right? When you are falling in love, you know, you go off the roof. That's resonance. So you don't know why your pupils get wider and you don't know what's happening to you. Okay, this is resonance, right? If you talk to your friend, to your that topic here that you should not never mention, goes off the roof, right? Trigger him or her. That's resonance. Okay, so let me give you some example, and I will connect to uh, how how that explains standing waves. Okay, resonance with a glass. A glass is a system that can oscillate. If you excite the glass with the right frequency, it's going to oscillate at a higher amplitude, higher amplitude, higher amplitude, until it breaks, right? Oh, it's so cute. What is that? It's very cute. Okay, be careful with your ears. You see, this is resonance, and it's going to get high, higher amplitude, higher amplitude, higher So this, this, that um, some people can do that with their voice. Mm. So they will take a crystal glass, you know, wet their finger, make the glass sing. They hear the frequency and they sing exactly the same frequency and they break it. But you need to have a very like, loud, you have to do it very, like very high amplitude. Huh? 
No, you, you, you cannot do it. Like it's, you have to be a, a professional singer. It's very hard to do it. Okay, so it's a funny video, but you're gonna explain what's happening. Okay. Okay, can you explain what happened? Why why is it it didn't break? Not not because of the liquid? Not the shape? Not because it's closed. It's not glass. It's not glass. Uh, yes. I mean, if, if you not with your voice, okay, you need to have like a machine doing that. Okay, that's the very famous video. I don't know if you watch it. It happened in Washington State. Tacoma Bridge, they just had built a new bridge. You have seen that? Tacoma Bridge, very famous video. I don't know when when was it, in, maybe in the 40s? I'm not sure. Long time ago. But the engineers, they... What did they call it? Galloping Jersey. They didn't do a good job, right? So there was a windy weather, and the wind started to swing the bridge back and forth at exactly the resonance frequency. Swinging, swinging, swinging. And it was a brand new bridge. What's going to happen to the bridge? It broke, right? And um, so the, the engineers learned how not to do it again. And there, it's a very famous because a guy... Uh, forgot his dog in the car and he went back to get it and he was safe. The London Bridge happened? No, is it, is it big? Millennium Bridge? Ah. Like recently? Or? Didn't take good engineering class, right? Yeah. That's interesting. I'm, I will uh, Google it. So the military people, they learned that when they are marching, they should not do it when they cross the bridge. Because if you, they do it like this at the right frequency, they're going to excite the bridge and they can break the bridge and everyone falls. So you can do that with music. So, for example, here you have two, 
tuning forks and they are tuned at the right uh, frequency. So this is a 240 hertz tuning fork. This is a 240 hertz tuning fork. This one, you are not touching it, right? But this one, you, you, you hit it, you're going to have a sound. That sound will excite that one that will start to vibrate because it's resonance and make the sound. Coming back, right? Yes. Nothing. Can you hear? You are exciting it at distance because of resonance. You stop and here you hear it. Isn't that amazing? It's resonance. Okay, so when you are playing music like guitar, uh, clarinet, flute, you, you have what is called standing waves. And standing waves happen because of resonance. So I'm just going to show you an example and I will explain how they happen. So that's the idea behind music. So here it's a harp. Do you see the standing waves? Do you oh, see those that waves? Line? What happened to the music though? No, we, what we, we don't care about the music. We want to see, <laughs> we want to look at the standing wave. Do you see the standing waves? Yeah. That's how you make music, right? And uh, it's, it's just for, you see that? Standing waves will that that has to do with resonance. Okay, so it's going to vibrate at a given frequency, and it's going to make a standing waves. And uh, let me show you a violin. Did you did you watch it? Oh, the Millennium Bridge. Yeah. Okay, send me the video. Oh, thank you. So when you are playing violin, so that's going to be a standing wave, and this is called the first harmonic. Okay, so you are exciting the rope. So the rope has a single frequency. It will be willing to move and to oscillate. So that will be the first harmonic, and it's called resonance. That frequency here, that's, that will be the pitch you are hearing, right? So that will be the pitch, that will be the frequency that you are hearing with your ears. But actually, there is more than the first harmonic. You have the second harmonic. So you have many, many standing waves on top of each other. And they add, add with each other out. So that will be for uh, wisdom. You see here, all those harmonics add up. And you get the white one. That will be the timber. 
So the first harmonic gives you the pitch, the frequency that you hear, and the, the other harmonics that goes with it will give you the how rich is the sound. Obviously, with violent, you get a very rich sound. So I will show you how do we get standing waves. But these are standing waves. So that will be, for example, the second harmonic. A flute. And it, it will make more sense in a moment. It's just that I just want to give you an idea. So it's a flute uh, that is very nice because it's open on both sides. So opening on both sides and you can see the pressure wave inside and that's going to be the first that's going to be the first harmonic, right? So the sound will oscillate inside with a given frequency. So that will be the pitch that you hear. So it's very much like the bridge that you excite and the bridge will respond at a given frequency that will be resonance. Same thing with music instruments. If you excite them at the right frequency, they start to vibrate and they start to make sound, right? The pitch that you hear is from the first harmonic. And at the same time, you have other harmonics on top of it, but that will be the timber. So, and um, so I, I have the harp, and okay, that's that's my experiment that I did with kids. You see, you have. To, you have a rope, like a guitar, right? And you excite it at the right frequency, you're going to have the first harmonic. If you try something above that frequency, 100 hertz or below, nothing is happening. So it's exactly like the bridge or the, the glass, right? If you want to break it, if you want to excite it, if you want to have large amplitude, you need to excite it at the right frequency. So it's going to vibrate up and down. You know how many times a second will be the frequency. So this is the first harmony. Now, if I multiply the frequency by two, I'm going to have the second harmonic. Anything in between will, won't work. So that will be the second harmonic. You see, you have two big bumps. And then you can excite it at three times the fundamental, so that will be 300 hertz. I'm going to have three bumps. That's the third harmonic, right? And that's how we play music. I don't have the sound, nothing here. Fourth harmonic, I'm going to have four bumps. So all these are resonance, right? You excite the string at the right frequencies, you get standing waves. If you combine all those standing waves when you are playing guitar, so you get the sound. That's how we're gonna play music. So that the, and you can have, you can keep going. You have more and more bumps, right? So if I have the next one, seven, I have seven bumps. And. Uh, So how does that happen? So let me show you a wave on a string. So that will be your guitar. So let's say I'm going to no dumping. I'm going to create a pulse. Look, look at the wave. And this is fixed here. So you have a pulse. You see how it's reflected back? 
What's happening when it's reflected? Is it going to be erect or upside down? Upside down, it reverses itself, right? I can have a loose hand. Is it upside down now? Yeah, still, um, when it's reflected, it goes. Oh no, it's not upside down when it's reflected here. It's on ups, upside down when it's reflected here, right? So a loose hand, it's not reversing, flipping over. Let's say no hand, it gets lost. Boom. Okay, so now look look very careful what's going to happen if I make... What do you think is going to happen if I make a pulse and then another pulse and then another pulse and then another pulse? Huh? They what? They're going to interfere with each other, right? So one will be reflected interfering with the next one, right? And that's how I'm going to make standing waves. Okay, so if I have one pulse and then another pulse, another pulse, Another person is going to interfere with each other, and that's how I get standing waves. So these, these are standing waves, okay? I'm exciting at the right frequency, and I get standing waves. That's how we play music. So, for example, here, it's uh, explained even better. Bam, 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 bam. So you see how waves can interfere with each other? They can destroy each other or they can reinforce each other. So when we have waves moving to the right and waves moving to the left, they interfere each other. So either they destroy each other, so that will be destructive interference, uh, that will be a node, an anti-node, or they can construct each other, and you have constructive interference, right? Anti-node and nodes, and that's how we have standing waves. Isn't that cool? Right? <coughs> okay, just a short movie. So you have a flute and a car clarinet. Okay, I think I, I'm going to skip. The clarinet is open at the bell, but at the mouthpiece, it's almost completely sealed by the reed. So the pressure is large, but there's little air motion. Let's picture the reflection of a pressure pulse. At a closed end, the air can't move, so the compression pulse can only move back along the pipe. The pressure wave is reflected with a phase change of zero. At an open end, things are different. Here, the pressure is approximately fixed at atmospheric, so the sound pressure is near zero. So the pressure wave is reflected with a phase change of pi. The flute has two open ends and is roughly cylindrical. So we expect the lowest note to have a period of twice the length divided by the speed of sound. And the reciprocal of that gives the frequency. The clarinet has one open and one closed end. This time the cycle repeats after the pulse travels four lengths of the instrument. So the period of the lowest note would be about twice as long, and the frequency about half that of the flute. Because of the bell and the flare, the clarinet's not cylindrical. So let's replace them. Let's compare the lowest notes of the flute and the cylindrical clarinet. And the flute has the whole harmonic series. So which one has the highest frequency, the flute or the clarinet? 
throat, right? And we can explain that. So I'm going to skip that. And um, let's say, do we have a flute here? Did I show you the flute? Yeah, I show you the flute. Okay. Let's let's just do some math very quickly. So next uh, Thursday, I can introduce modern physics, but very quickly. So that's no, no. The, okay, so the five no this coming Thursday, this coming Thursday we have a a pop quiz, and I have a meeting at three thirty, and next week Thursday we have the final, and the time is forced on us, so I cannot change it. I can I can stay extra time if you are late because you have another exam that I can do for you. It's at two, something like this. Yeah, if you take my astronomy class, then you will see me again. <laughs> so that's uh, let let's do some math just for uh, stretching the brain, right? So you are playing guitar, okay? You are playing guitar. That's the length of of the string of your guitar, right? And it's it's gonna sound like one pitch, so one frequency. So what do you see here? Do you see? Half a wavelength? Do you see one wavelength? How many wavelengths do you see? So remember, when you have a wave, a full wavelength will look like this, right? So the first harmonic, so you have just one bump. That will be the first thing you can make as a standing wave. So what is that? One wavelength, half of a wavelength, three wavelengths? Compared to here, so this is one wavelength here, one cycle. One wavelength is one cycle. Huh? So how many of a wavelength do I have here? Half. So we have the length of your guitar string is half of a wavelength, yes? So you can say that your wavelength is twice the length, yes? Yes or no? You say yes? yes? Okay. So what's going to be the frequency? The frequency is the speed divided by the wavelength. Yes or no? Yes. So the frequency equals to what? What should I put here? Is that a two or is that, is that a Okay, so no, because that's not a clarinet or a flute, it's a guitar, so the, the, it's a very good, uh, very, very good point. The, the speed of, of, uh, of the wave, wave on the string just depends on the tension. Like if you, if you take your guitar and you increase the tension, you're going to change the speed of the wave. So we are not going to do the, the, the math here. I just want to know what do we have here. Very good tool. So it's a good question. The, spring, the, 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 the speed of a wave on the string depends on the tension of the string. Such a good question that I'm going to go here. Let's say here. You see, the speed of a wave on a string depends on the tension 
you know how tight how tight the string is and the mass of the string so 2l okay now because this is very fun okay so that will be the first frequency okay let's let's do this one so what do we have now we have two bump on the same string so what's the relationship one wavelength right is that clear so the wavelength is equals to i can say 2l over 2 right the same thing still 1l yes or no so the frequency equals the wavelength the speed divided by the wavelength right so it's going to be equals to what the wavelength divided by 2l times 2 when you divide by a ratio you multiply the reciprocal yes or no are you with me okay next how many wavelengths do you have here one and a half how much is that one and a half in a ratio three over two so the wavelength equals what isolate the wavelength it's going to be what 2L over over 3. So frequency equals speed divided by wavelength. So it's going to be equals speed times 3 over 2L. So do you see a pattern here? Can you think over it just to stretch out your brain? Can you give me a relationship between the frequency and L? Times what? Here it's time what? One. Here is time. And here is time. Three. And you keep going, right? So here it's going to be a integer N. And here what do we have all the time? Twelve. And that's your equation to get the harmonics. It's called the harmonics, right? So when you play music for a given pitch, the pitch is going to given, be given by the frequency of the fundamental, the first one. And then it will add, you, you will add more on that to get the timbre. But these, these are called harmonics, and this is called the fundamental. Right? That, that's, that's the theory behind music. So I'm not going to go deeper, but you get like the appetite for it, right? You see how it works. Isn't that cool? Even if you're not going into physics, you know, it's good to stretch out the brain. And then you have the equation for all your... Uh, Um, and uh, music instrument. So let's try to do this one. So the the equation is the frequency equals the speed of your wave divided by twice the length of the string. What do you think it's going to happen if you pinch your guitar here? Is the length getting smaller or bigger? smaller so if that number goes small decreases what's going to happen to the frequency higher do you play guitar do you know that when you pinch here you're going to get a higher frequency higher pitch right that's how you change the pitch right by changing the length so when you play guitar, the way you are controlling the frequency is by you can change the length of the string. Okay, and you do this, right? Blah, 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 blah. 
And you can, what are you doing here when you are moving this? The tension, very good, right? So what's gonna happen to it? As you increase the tension, you increase the velocity, right? So the tension is higher, the, the velocity is higher. So what's gonna happen to the frequency? If this is high, increases so you have a higher pitch right higher frequency higher speed so if you want to if you are not happy with the sound you are getting you can make it tighter and the frequency will go higher what else did you notice on the guitar do all the string have the same mass or you have thinner and thicker string right Exactly. So the, the professional, they know, you know, they go to a special store and they say, okay, I need that size of a string or this size of a string. So remember what we learned in physics one, as you increase the mass, as you increase the mass, what's going to happen to the speed? Is it going to go slow or, or higher? More mass. huh? So more mass, more inertia. More inertia means when you're applying a force, is it going to move faster or slower? Increasing the mass. Slower, right? So if you increase the mass, the speed will go down and the frequency will go down. Does it make sense? Right? Just, just out of uh, making sense of it, right? So if you increase the mass of the strain, Okay, you do decrease the velocity, so you decrease the frequency, you're going to have a lower frequency. Is that clear? And you see, they, they go, they change the string of their guitar, and you have thick string, and you have very thin string. Yeah, do you have a question? The <laughs> They just have a very good hearing. So what they do when they are tuning? When they have the device that doesn't record it. Yes, yes, yes. So for example, if you are tuning a piano, they will have a tuning fork, right? The tuning fork will sound the A. So they hear A, and then they, they, they sound their piano for the same A, so they should hear exactly the same pitch. They are able to hear the pitch. But that you need to very good earrings. Like I have a very bad earrings. I cannot tell apart pitches. It's very hard. You need to have, some people are like the, the good musicians, they have very good earrings, right? I know someone who play guitar without even going to school just by, you know, using his earrings. Any question? So uh, in a clarinet, so that's a clarinet and that's a flute. Like he getting less shy, you know, he was in the back and then he moved a little bit uh, closer, <laughs> not a little bit closer. <laughs> it's, it's better, you know, than, it's never too late. Okay, so let me ask you something. How much of a wavelength this is? I'm, I'm just practicing the... Huh? A, quarter. a quarter, very good, right? So the first harmonic will be one-fourth of a wavelength. And to see here, it's an anti-node because it can move freely and this, is, this cannot move. How, this is a flute. How much of a wavelength this is? No, this half, this is a quarter, and a quarter, this is half. So the smallest uh, frequency, I mean, the smallest wavelength that you can get is half. Here, it's one-fourth. So that will make difference in the pitch that you can hear between a flute and a clarinet. Right? So that will be the flute. And uh, that the clarinet is going to be something different. So it will be higher pitch. 
So this is music. It's super cool, very interesting. And um, like when you are playing guitar, the first harmonic will give you the pitch that you hear. And then you have twice the harmonic, so that will be two bump, three bump. They are all adding to each other, but you cannot tell them apart, right? You can only hear with your ear, you can only hear the first harmonic. It's called the fundamental. So that will be the pitch of the music. And then you have some of the second, third, fourth. How much of it you have, that will make the, the instrument like it will make a flute or a clarinet or a guitar, a violin. You know, we, it's not in the final. It's just if you are curious and you are playing music. Okay, so next Thursday, what I'm going to do. So first of all, uh, for the next week pop quiz, I will ask you a question like we discussed something very easy. Looking at a guitar, for example, here is the question I'm going to ask. If you increase the length of a guitar, you see the frequency will decrease or increase? Decrease, okay? So it will be low pitch. You decrease the pitch, right? If you increase the tension of a string, you increase the speed of, of the wave. So you're going to increase the frequency, okay? But it's not on the final, okay? No standing wave on the final. I'm, I'm stopping at uh, optics, right? Next week, I will do, I will introduce nuclear physics because I know some of you work in, a, or gonna work maybe in radiotherapy nuclear physics, so it's, it's good to learn about radiation. I will tell you about very interesting um, cases, applications, right? Okay, so we're going to, it's almost 3.30, right? The class ends at 3.30. And uh, uh, as usual, for the practice final, if you do well, I'll give you extra credit. If you want me to add another attempt, I, I can do that if you want. I forgot what I did. There is no homework anymore. That's it. We are done with the homework, okay? No, oh, there is one today. Okay, so that will be the last one. No more homework for next week. So remember, the final is in person on paper. I will bring the equation sheet for you. Uh, I, 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 so I have another class just before this one. No, I don't have another class before this one. But if you have another exam, if you come late, that's fine. I can stay extra time. Any question? No, I will bring that because I became suspicious that people are writing on their equation sheet. Not you, but some people. But you can, you can always bring it in, in case I don't have enough. Now, if you have very specific equations that you think I don't have, so you can show it to me and you can have them. But I highly recommend that you, you do the practice final, right? I'm going to take attendance. <coughs> And as usual, try to do it on your own, and then you can discuss. You, you, can, you can use my magnifying glass, or you can even use my glasses if you want.